the leader. Mm -hmm. right? A leader is somebody who is supposed to show people direction. A leader is somebody who acts like a motivational speaker. A leader is somebody who like brings hope to a society. Mm -hmm. Now having that in mind, when we look at our constitution, chapter 6, let's say article 75, where it talks of conduct of the state officers, mm -hmm. it is very, very evident that most of our leaders nowadays have lost control, whereby they just throw words, mm -hmm. not minding whom they are affecting. Mm -hmm. Now, coming to us as, as youths, we are facing the issue of, you know, uh, we are facing the issue of lack of support from these uh, big politicians. We are also looking at the issue of uh, lack of proper guidance, mm -hmm. all right? Now, um, over what has happened in the recent past, it's very shameful, and uh, we, we can't emulate that. Sure. We, we, we as youths, we are, we are gearing up for the success of this country. Mm -hmm. If we look at the, the, the promulgation of the constitution uh, 10 years ago, it has been ages. I mean, it has been stage after stage, stage after stage. Mm -hmm. And with the current regime, we thank the Honorable uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, who is trying his level best mm -hmm. to make sure that the big four agenda are achieved. Mm -hmm. All right? Only that sometimes we face the, those leaders who, are, who have more personal interest than public interest. Mm -hmm. And uh, from my own opinion, I would say that uh, I think the youth hold the betterment of this future, the future of this country. Sure. So I believe with the proper chance, we'll be able to, you know, change this Kenya. Now, on the issue of youth uh, and in the upcoming uh, youth leadership, mm -hmm. I would say is that, uh, first I also, I would also want to challenge these youth and tell them that it's high time mm -hmm. we wake up from the issue, I mean, from the from an era of you know those big promises from this big politician, mm -hmm. then delivering nothing at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It is we. It is our responsibility to wake up in the morning and face the day that it comes and say to ourselves that no, tomorrow is our day. Mm -hmm. So I'm also challenging these our fellow youths to stand up because if you look carefully, you realize that they're the ones encouraging this because somebody will come today promise you I'll, bring, I'll give you a show. I mean, let, let me just use a very common example. We, have, we are going to go into a dispensation of, a, of campaign. Let's mm -hmm. say, if God bless that this corona ends. Now, if we go into uh, the... We, we should be saying it has started. Because you've seen the campaigns. <laughs> well, the, of course, the president has not officially launched it, you know, mm -hmm. because poly, uh, constitutionally, first of all, the parliament has to be dissolved mm -hmm. for us to move into that dispensation of, of campaign. But what I'm saying is, I'm saying that uh, uh, we are moving to that dispensation, and now that's where we'll see people coming up with different interests, different interests, all right? Now, uh, let me take you back a bit. Eh? Mm -hmm. In the subsequent constitution, uh, uh, constitution, of chapter six where we are discussing about leadership and integrity mm -hmm. we have chapter that chapter six uh, uh, article 73 mm -hmm. where it talks mm -hmm. about the role of leadership sure. you see when we look at the role of leadership it narrows down to we as individual because we as people we act mm -hmm. as leaders in the various capacity but most of the time we kind of drift away from what you elected, and then we start throwing words in public. Mm -hmm. The another issue that I also love, love to mention is that we've lacked what we call moral support in terms of mm -hmm. now raising these youths. And uh, the moral support, as I was saying, that you're moving into the dispensation of uh, of, uh, of campaign, mm -hmm. you realize that a very prominent politician will come up, may say a remote village. And then he's been living in Nairobi. He comes, he goes to a remote village mm -hmm. with an intention of vying either an MCA position, MP position, senator, women rep, all the way to the governorship position. But when, if you look at his manifesto, you realize that he will only be blabbing on the promises that have been there all along, but nothing so far has developed. Where now we lose focus and now he realizes that these people, he can exploit them with, let's say, handouts for 50 bob or 100 bob, people to be chanting and screaming his name. Mm -hmm. for, now that is showing leadership. I would like to say that is not leadership. Mm -hmm. I think that is misleading uh, of the general public, mm -hmm. where they tend to believe that we are headed for the right direction, which we are not. Mm -hmm. yes. But you see, for, for, for quite some time, I've seen the electorates being uh, blamed for the kind of leaders they choose or they elect into office. But these are the same leaders who will speak. They have a good PR. 
they will promise. They will tell us this is what we will do for you. And by what they say, we believe them. But apparently when they get into that office, they change. How then do we get to blame the electorates? I wouldn't really say that we should blame the electorates. But the point should be what we as leaders, as we are elected, what are we doing? <laughs> if, for example, I'm vying, I have an intention to vie for uh, an MCA Mountain View Westland constituency mm -hmm. come 2022, mm -hmm. I need to understand what is it that my people are facing that I need to go to the County Assembly of Nairobi mm -hmm. and address. Mm -hmm. If it's a problem of poor sewer line, if it's a problem of poor governance, if it's a problem of, you know, uh, 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 poor education, mm -hmm. if there is no enough schools in the area, first of all is to understand our role as leaders. It is very key and mandatory to know where we belong. Okay. I will say this, that uh, in most cases, people are attracted by the benefits of an office, but not the, the inner service of leadership. Mm -hmm. Because, my brother, you will realize that as a leader, you become like a servant mm -hmm. and as a servant you need to express and understand your people in a manner mm -hmm. that they need to be well they need to feel that uh, active representation wherever you are mm -hmm. because as i said as i was starting that as leaders you need to know first number one is that you are like a moral support to these many that are looking at up to you mm -hmm. you, you you're that role model that they are saying like in for example where you come from you hear somebody saying enda kumushimiwa Go to Mwishimua, he will help you. So by just by that mention, you've realized that you've been ranked. And that ranking comes with, I mean, comes with some, you know, some responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So I think people are forgetting what they elected to do in the office and now drifting to their own personal, uh, personal interests. Mm -hmm. Now that's where we now come and say that people are forgetting their duties mm -hmm. and attending to their personal needs. Okay, I want you to hold on that uh, point of power and responsibility. Right. Uh, thank you, Oidira, for joining us. Um, speaking of leadership and integrity, we've had cases in courts. We have uh, rumors, allegations, uh, embezzlement of fund, or funds, rather. Right now, we have cases of our governors in courts. The kind of leadership that we voted in office this term and even the previous term and even yesteryears, does it mean this country or we as a people, we are not disciplined enough to be responsible or to be true to our calling of leadership and being responsible or being good stewards of what the people have voted as in for? Okay, that's an interesting question. Uh, question, thank you. Uh, first, uh, my name is Oidera Wanjiru. Uh, mothers like to call me Beatrice. Mm -hmm. I'm also Nyeraria Mumbi and I wear many hats. I would like to say that I'm from the Red Vest Movement of Kenya and we talk about corruption. We thrash grafting always. Mm -hmm. um, the question on is it the problem of the electorate or is, is it the problem of the law or is it the problem of who is approaching the electorate? I would like to say it's a problem of, uh, first of all, lack of identity as, as the people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, lack of identity in what sense? <coughs> that first we must uh, realize and acknowledge that democracy is a concept that is as new in Kenya and it started working in Kenya probably two decades ago. That is um, in the late um, 80s and 90s where we had the second liberation. Mm -hmm. And that's why names like um, Raila Odinga are such big names in Kenya. Um, the democracy itself is not really well embraced or would not understand the constructs of democracy. I'm not here as a lawyer, but well, I could be quite vast. Um, and I've also interacted in spaces, uh, political spaces as a socialist. Um, I would like to say that in 2013, I was, I think, um, is it 19? I'm not sure. Um, but I remember being a chief campaigner of a very, he, he was, he's, he's an engineer and he's someone who sounded as visionary for the people of Kayole. Mm -hmm. That is Mbakasi Central constituency. But what people told me is that, why well, there we understand what you're talking about. But the thing is, mm -hmm. at the moment, we do not want this. So that explains that um, elections or politics or the electioneering, uh, electioneering period in Kenya is all about 
popularity and populism. So if popularity and populism is winning against democracy and the constructs of democracy, mm -hmm. then we are not going to go anywhere. We are, we are going to keep on doing the same thing, expecting a ballot revolution in Kenya, mm -hmm. and that is not entirely possible. Um, the other problem I would like to say is um, the issue on identity, besides not suffering um, um, things that happened with democracy and of course heroic persons coming out of it there is a transition where we are coming from an old constitution into a new constitution and we mark exactly 10 years after um we promulgated our constitution on um august of 2010 yeah. um and definitely there is something or um an independent commission we must talk about and that is the ieec and now the iebc the transition between those two periods. There's someone who did not do their job. So before we can even talk about devolution and its role, the, the roles of the local government, uh, not the local government, but the county governments and um, uh, the, the roles of the national government, we need to talk about the discrepancies. Why did um, civic education not work? Mm -hmm. And why do we have a lot of monies um, in our county budgets going back to the treasury because of they're not getting used and which monies are those public participation which again mm -hmm. kenyans have left or community-based organizations have left the masses mm -hmm. of um the government of the day the national government to come and articulate issues so why should um a commission like ngek call for um a, a public participation forum in uh, kenya monetary or whatever school of studies yeah and um the people in, uh, in Mashinani cannot be able to get this information first hand, either through a poster somewhere, either through information or someone sent by the chief mm -hmm. to actually tell these people you need to appear on this and this date or actually send you elected or nominated or um, community organizers or um, all these co uh, key community youth persons and, 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 and elderly persons in the community to go and participate. So there are th there's a fraction of people who understand constitutionalism and the essence of constitutionalism, mm -hmm. the essence of um, uh, what the preamble, for instance, talks about or, or advocates for and definitely passing on the ideals of this constitution to the next generation. Mm -hmm. And there is another generation of people that actually do not even care. They do not even know. And who are they? The youth, actually, the children the belonging to the middle class. On, yeah. You have said there, there is public participation that is called for. Mm -hmm. But these people do not go. But mm -hmm. if a politician says or if a politician is said to be at a certain place, mm -hmm. you will see people. But when something has been called, which is of paramount to them, they will not show up. Who is to blame? Is it the leader or the people? Um, I will say it's the transition. The transitional process that did not work. Mm -hmm. Isaac Hassan crew did not do the right thing in Kenya. And that is to instill um, the values or the ethics of this constitution to the people. So it's not the people and it's not the politician. The mm -hmm. politician knows and he represents a fraction of people that are 100% aware of what these things are, of what these laws are, of what these functions are. Mm -hmm. But whoever he approaches by the end of the day, mm -hmm. he will appear heroic or like our savior, which is a problem in Kenya again, mm -hmm. because this person is telling them what they need to hear and not necessarily what they're going to do. Especially if they have money. Can, can I go to a famous line? Uh, oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> hold on to that point. Eric, we were speaking about a responsibility of these leaders. Yeah. They have been voted in. Yes. You promised you will build this road you will give us jobs you have this kind of money like she has mentioned money will move to the counties mm -hmm. but we have no discipline as leaders to be good stewards you know one thing that amuses me so much is the fact that uh, we as let's let me say politician or other leaders mm -hmm. they'll quote the constitution very well and whenever they're in problem they'll quote the constitution very well and they say as per the constitution this and this is supposed to be done. But very unfortunate that there's the same same people who call the constitution, they don't follow it. Mm -hmm. Because now when we see what is happening online everywhere, you realize that people are misusing the constitution. Now, on the next point, she has talked about the issue of public participation. Mm -hmm. And she has also talked about the issue of, you know, the leader going to, he approaches a 100% fraction who understands who the leader, who, who a leader is. Mm -hmm. I would love to interject on her point by saying this. Mm -hmm. uh, many people lack what we call civic education. Mm -hmm. Now, on this civic education is now where we come and say uh, public enlightenment and public, can I call, awareness. awareness. Mm -hmm. Now, 
how I wish the government could invest so much in public awareness in the key matters of the country so as people also to know where they belong and where the constitution has placed them. Because most of the time, a mamamboga somewhere in Mountain View Westlands will not understand what chapter 6 talks about. We'll only see Eric there and say, Eric tells her, Mama, I'll boost your business. And then I'll go home saying, I've won that woman. Not knowing that what I've created in that woman mm -hmm. is a promise, so it is my responsibility as a leader to keep that promise. I wish, as I said earlier, in the coming dispensation, we now look at the issue of performance, mm -hmm. all right? And we as, uh, as electoralists now place these leaders, leaders under what we call public audit. Mm -hmm. Hey, we elected you five years ago. What have you done? All right? We, you promised us you'll build the road. Have you built the road? You promised us that you'll bring water. Is there any water? You promised that this you will do one, two, three. We are seeing nothing. What you normally see is fights every now in the county assembly, fights every now wherever you go, uh, very harsh utterance wherever you walk around, which is very disappointing. Mm -hmm. Now, she has talked about the issue of uh, the issue of. Uh, uh, the, the report that in a, this commission that was formed by Isaac, mm -hmm. where they did their report. I would love to say that, you know, let me be clear. Sometimes when you're in a public office as a state officer, you work under a system. A system mm -hmm. guides the you. The system? Mm -hmm. A system guides you. <laughs> and whenever you try to move out of that system, mm -hmm. you become an enemy. Mm -hmm. So there are two things here. You have to protect yourself as a person in your office. Mm -hmm. And also at the same time, you have to represent your people. So depending on who you are, now that's where you, you come out and say, are you an activist? If you're an activist, like let me quote the famous one that I know, Mkio Mtata, whom every time you will hear him in the morning with so much files in court, showing everybody in the country over the misuse of funds uh, and everything. So I think sir, the, the, the only thing that people need right now is a politics of we are doing this, give me a chance to do more. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me talk on my case. I'm a man, I am an upcoming politician. And I know where I come from, I present a lot. So it's upon my own self to know and discipline myself that, hey, I need to make sure that I deliver to these people. And that's why we now come and talk of, of the issue of service delivery to your people. Now, in most cases, an activist like her will fight a politician to keep, her un to keep the politician on toes. It's not on a bad way, mm -hmm. and it's not a bad thing, mm -hmm. but people do go wrong. I want also to address the next issue, why we face a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. I think it's very, very important for electorates to elect an educated person in these public offices. Why am I saying this? If, for example, you elect a Form 4 dropout to a public office, be rest assured, if that person even in mathematics got an E, how is he going to manage a budget of 20 million per month? Mm -hmm. Interesting. I think that's a... Uh, but also, you could be speaking of their skills. <laughs> exactly. Someone could be having <laughs> leadership <laughs> skills, <laughs> but they never went to school. Let me, let me, let me be clear You've this. seen the, the, the Oazes kwa circles and uh, Chamas Nyumbani. Yes. And they do so well. Yes. And they have projects and they move. But let me ask you, <laughs> at the end of the day, where do they lead to? I think it's understanding of the law. Understand and how does the understanding of the law? You can't understand the law if you don't know how to read. But you don't assume that since uh, I dropped out of form four and I w or rather I finished form four, I was just, I I was just giving a, a context whereby mm. for somebody to understand himself okay. and his roles, mm -hmm. he also need a bit of education. Mm -hmm. uh, not on a bad note, mm -hmm. but I think it's better where you're moving in this dispensation a for black. I mean, for better presentation. Like mm -hmm. for example, if I'm elected to the parliament or the county assembly mm -hmm. and even to pronounce myself my name is hard <laughs> how am i even going to sponsor one bill of rights <laughs> to pass through the, the the county assembly it is not possible that's qu quite true now a bit as you respond to my question uh, i'll kindly ask you to hold your mic well uh, uh, at the middle we were speaking about power and responsibilities because I am famous, I have money, I can make people vote for me. We know a number of people who are in office because they were famous, maybe for the things they did for the people. But when they get there, they are unable to balance between power and the responsibilities they are required of. What should be the way forward? What should be the way forward? Well, um, 
I'm not here to give or forward, but I'm here to give my thoughts. Well, if, you, <laughs> if we complain so much, you will never have the solution. Okay. Maybe you could be, ha be having an idea. Sure. Um, I, I, two things. The other day, I, I responded to Reverend Timothy Njoya in response to um, saying that Demogikoyo on Twitter and using that proudly as my identity. And I, I said on my Facebook timeline that you have an ID, that's an identity card, and you have no ideology. And you have no... Mm -hmm. yeah? ID and ideology. You mm -hmm. have no ID and you have no ideology. And you have no identity. What mm -hmm. does that mean? Mm -hmm. That we are so fast to adopt ways, new ways, whatever ways, compare Kenya to other democracies or other whatever, you know, or Rwanda or all these um, fast growing economies. But I would like to say something. Mm -hmm. Charity begins at home. True. Charity begins at home means that, and I also res are, um, I respond to the, uh, the illustration you, you, you brought in here. Um, the issue about who we are as a Kenyan people and the issue about na uh, nationalism, the issue about patriotism is, an, uh, is something that we must come in and draw a clear line. For instance, we have the Kenya Girl Guides and Scouting Association. Um, I saw um, something that went viral the other day about the celebrated Baden Powell and, and, and the ideals and, and all these things that he tried to instill um, through a certain system, yeah, Girl Guide Association and all the systems in, mm -hmm. in our country. And we become people that defend um, certain concepts that we do, not, we do not understand what these concepts are mm -hmm. about. We need to start uh, understanding ourselves and actually going beyond the constitution to understand who we are and the fraction of people that we represent and how um, my role as a person comes in um, uh, in making a decision that I'm not going to regret about. Mm -hmm. Look at this. I'm from Eastlands, and I will, I, I, will, I, will, I will talk about an MP who once said um, on, on, a, on, on a national holiday that mimi nilikuwa makanga na nilili chaguliwa. Yeah, ndio ulichaguliwa, but are you a populist in parliament? Mm -hmm. All right? Are you a patriot who is defending people some, uh, with some level of psychophancy? Yeah, some political big wig up there, you know, um, mm -hmm. representing a certain ideal, and you are not representing the will of the people down there. Mm -hmm. There's two different, uh, there's two different things. Giving the people a promise and going as per what chapter six of the constitution says. Mm -hmm. True, if I do not understand my mandate and my core mandate as an MP before I go to parliament, I will not deliver. In fact, talking about it, in, uh, talking about things like Gikomba fires and all these things that uh, these people from Eastlands want to defend and, and represent and matter to and all these things, mm -hmm. you're not going to be hard if you do not have even the basic yeah, understanding of constitution or actually what the people want. Mm -hmm. And actually being able to legitimize and formalize that language in a way that parliament mm -hmm. talks in this kind of way, people will understand you in parliament. Yeah, it's important that we have education. Um, I, I see the difference when, I, when, I'm, when I'm going to Galleria Mall and I'm, I'm using Langata Road and you'll see the nicely ever intact, you know, uh, mm. uh, these road whatever's reserves, you know, those areas, the mm -hmm. roundabouts, well kept. Compared to other sides ah, of the people. Ah, nice. <laughs> Pick up a city stadium. Things change. Do you know why? Nyasi uh, Kidero is famous. That Nyasi needs to go down within two months. Uh, Beach Road and on. Uh, Ihari Beacons. Uh, some budget needs to maintain that. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about how we are socialized as a people. Where we come from. How we've grown up. And what we want as Kenyans. And who we want to represent us. Mm -hmm. If it's someone like us. Then please don't go complaining that... Um, people are not doing what they promised to do because how can they deliver if they do not know what they're doing? But then the people who are there, mm -hmm. an example, the Eastlands, will, po will vote in their people. Yes. And the person who comes from where they are, mm -hmm. they have nothing new. Mm -hmm. They will go by that. Mm -hmm. They will promise, like an example, we've seen uh, leaders from uh, Nairobi, I've heard they've gone for benchmarking in Rwanda. <laughs> but when they come back, things don't change. Allow me to say something on that. Eh? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd also like to challenge the electorates on one thing. It's high time they stop the issue of Niwakwetu. Mm -hmm. The tribal thing in Kenya is killing us. The other day we saw President Magufuli in Kenya telling us that Kenya as a country we are doing well. But if we only stop one thing, tribalism mm -hmm. will go far. Secondly is uh, 
as she's saying, you realize that as a common one inch, the way his mind has been meant to, to function to a politician mm -hmm. is a way that let him come and promise, then we send him to deliver. Allow me to give this reference. I love my area MP. And uh, that man is working very tirelessly every morning to ensure that at least everybody uh, gets something in a way more so uh, during this period that we've been facing COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Honorable Tim Wanyonyi has been there for the people of Westlands constituency. Mm -hmm. And he has tried his level best to, you know, to make sure and ensure that uh, people at least get uh, what they elected him to do. Mm -hmm. But one thing he has lacked for quite some time is what we call support system to at, at word level, mm -hmm. all right, mm -hmm. to make him uh, achieve his agenda for the past two, uh, t past two terms he has been in it. Why that? Mm -hmm. Simply because as leaders, and I repeat this, we need to be very accountable over the roles we've been given. We need to step up and say yes. Last month, they drew a budget of, let's say, five million to, to, to Jenga Hibarabara. And yes, guys, this is what we are doing. Mm -hmm. So that is one thing. People feel like when they elected in, uh, in county assembly or in, uh, in, 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 uh, in parliament, is now their time to eat, mm -hmm. which is a misconception. And that's why, personally, I'm charging the youth to wake up and say no to corruption, say no to being misused, and spearhead the agenda of progress. Mm -hmm. Because if you are that entrepreneur as a youth, let that le leader help you, but not, don't allow that leader to misuse you. Sure. You become my blogger today, I pay you, let's say, 500 bucks per day. Then you suffer for the rest of your life. You're gaining nothing. Why don't you make yourself uh, usable? I mean, why don't you stand up and say, yes, I'm Eric and so-and-so, this is myself, and this is where I'm going. And on the issue that she was saying on the, uh, on the personal identity, it's also very important to know who you are. Mm -hmm. All right? Because you, I, I, I've been a youth for a long time. I'm still a youth. Mm -hmm. And uh, many people that approaches you, be it older age or small age, you realize that they are doing what we call, they are looking at what you have, then they see how they can get it. Ah, uh, Eric, Mwishimiwa. Mm -hmm. It's a common problem, but at the end of the day, how do you tackle it from the above? All right? And that's now where the leaders come and make people vulnerable for the, to use them. Yeah. I'll make you be begging for me five bob, five bob, five bob every day, but you will never grow. Anytime you want to grow and you approach me, I see you as a competitor threat. The next point. It is also important to be creative and innovative as a youth. Mm -hmm. So that as a, when a leader comes, he finds you doing something. And I, I like telling people, it's also good you as a youth to have what you call a bargaining point. Mm -hmm. This is what I have. What will you do for me before I vote you in? Okay. It is as clear as that. All right. Waithira, uh, we, <laughs> we're running out of time here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's another interview coming up. But do you think political positions have been used in this country to acquire wealth? <laughs> okay, I can prove. Because we, we, have, we have a number, we have a number who have gone there, uh, Escobar kind of thing. Mm -hmm. they, they are popular, they have money here, but they still want to go in just to be there. But we also have people, uh, that's what I'm asking, do, do we have people who have used <laughs> the platform of politics uh -huh. to become wealthy? Well, that's a hilarious question. And first of all, it's very true. So many people have risen to power and um, used their positions of power to amass wealth um, at the expense of the taxpayer. Uh, and as, as Eric is talking, Hillary, um, I'm, I'm thinking all through about um, something called neoliberalism. And what is neoliberalism? I didn't really want to use a lot of mini words here that we use in the activism world, but I think I have to talk about it for the first time on here. Mm -hmm. um, neoliberalism is the aspect of uh, the government of the day um, relegating its key duties to um, other players like the civil society, um, like donors, all these people to come and do things that the government should be doing. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean 
Um, not necessarily on matters to do with uh, creating public awareness on anything, uh, like on our constitution, which everyone is doing, and there are so many um, outfits out there educating people and giving them a thousand bob every day or 500 bob kulechini, which is not different from, uh, from any other hustle out there. But I'm saying, um, let's stop commercializing on two things on the lives of Kenyans and number two on information and number three on opportunities mm -hmm. and number four let's stop blaming the youth over mistakes that Mwai Kibaki the retired president did mm -hmm. let's stop blaming the youth and calling them thieves which is something the president of Kenya did earlier this year because the youth are not thieves the youth are trying to live and survive by their means mm -hmm. because their papers are no longer working for them and there is a particular set of old guards and very rich individuals in mm -hmm. top government uh, positions mm -hmm. who are not realizing that the youth are 76% of our population, of our demographic mm -hmm. um, um, composture. And it's time that if, uh, if, they, they, uh, if, if they're not sure uh, that things are changing, these are, things are actually changing. Not in favor of any youthful uh, president or aspiring candidate for that matter, mm -hmm. but things are changing in favor of actually power is shifting to the grassroots. And what does that mean? Mm -hmm. That the poor person is beginning to realize that they cannot live mm -hmm. on one meal a day. True. And when that happens, don't blame people for doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. All these people, the 10 big families that own land in Kenya, three Americans or two Americans and the rest are Britons and all these people, the foreigners, at the expense of someone who went to a forest, came back, and his fifth generation is from the time people were fighting from 1940 something to 1958, uh, to 1956 rather. The children of those people do not have something to eat. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it's coming back on you people. That's why um, an MP will stand somewhere and say this and this and this and this mother and this and this. And this. Actually, the youthful are starting to reclaim or actually take mm -hmm. their power positions. Mm -hmm. And it's going to have a lot of friction and it's going to be messy. True. But messy in a way that we are not here with an intention to fight as the youth, but we are here to take power. Mm -hmm. And if um, things have to go down before that happens, mm -hmm. maybe even a ballot revolution is, is, is quite an idea whose time is not yet here. Um, but some kind of change thing is coming. So uh, but back to neoliberalism, Kidogo, let me allow me to just finish about uh, new, neoliberalism. Mm -hmm. uh, four, four key factors, uh, the big four agenda, health, housing, all these things, four basic things. Look at who has infiltrated that market. Look at who has infiltrated that um, discourse on housing agenda. Yeah the real estate, it has become a capitalistic venture. Mm -hmm. Providing people shelter has become a capitalistic venture. Look at education. Who are the key players? The private sector. A rich person's child, an MP's child, will not go to a primary school, a public primary school in Tani. Why? Because they can afford. So it has become a capitalistic venture. Look at health. I one day went for Mahali uh, to Napo Roy, where, where, where I was coming from this morning. We came to hospital, um, I think it was the last year, and I sat with this Omamawa clinic. I didn't know where to start um, the, the, the queues from. And I heard the nurses were talking because they were on a tea break, some, some kind of a break, and then the, the, the whatever, the medical uh, practitioners there were, were conversing, and one said, You know what? Um, if a certain international donors withdrew their support to um, the maternal um, health care system mm -hmm. and uh, the relief, uh, is it relief or is this, um, this HIV program uh, and diabetes, these special programs for people that, um, and, and HIV testing, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. When you go, you get uh, ARVs, you go get this. If a certain donor was to withdraw their budget mm -hmm. in Nairobi alone, so many nurses and medical practitioners and so many people will go home with nothing to eat. Look they at who we have today that. in employment. Today. That, is a, that is a final one um, that uh, neoliberalism has hit really hard. Mm -hmm. Look at um, markets. Look at employment. In the last one decade, we've had so many, a lot of youth um, being churned out to the system, yeah? Mm -hmm. And they cannot feed themselves. Why? We have taught people to be professionals, but we have not taught people the basic life skills of survival. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It's not okay for Betty now to be seen doing odd jobs. I have uh, since decided to be a farmer. It's not okay for Nyerere Mumbi to be seen doing odd jobs because she went to a university and she there's something, there's something wrong. And neoliberalism has to be thrown out mm-hmm. for things to start working the right way. And the right way is socialism. What kind of socialism? I saw Pasaris the other day complain on, on Twitter that people are telling her, hey, muheshimiwa uli nilikuambia hivi na hivi kukakata kunutumia pesa. But of course, Pasaris is getting paid a certain amount of money. And we know um, the higher the pay, the higher the taxes. Mm-hmm. And we also know that she can't be there for the whole of Nairobi mm-hmm. to, to, to pay rent, to, to pay health. So, at a kimbia mahali kuna emergency. Mm-hmm. So please, the dependency, On the, dependency the dependency <laughs> culture, mm-hmm. your handouts. And now it's even worse. Sita kiata miambili. Manze, fulani, I don't have 1,000 bob to go to the hospital. It has to be broken. Why? Corona is here to make people go back to start farming. Mm-hmm. Um, the education system that we have in Kenya today that Dr. Wandi Njoa keeps talking about um, mm-hmm. and keeps bashing, she is bashing for a reason. We need to teach our children to learn to live and by the skills they get and also be able to question. So do not also come here and also scrap the universities and, and, and try to curtail the number of people that go to universities. Do that, but make sure the market out there is sustaining for them. Mm-hmm. By, wha- by doing what? Anza Kurudisha Agriculture Primary School. It's okay. going to work probably, just somehow. Right. Uh, Eric, as you respond to that, uh, someone has challenged you, and I, w- I think this is an opportunity for you to defend your uh, sentiments about education. Uh, he's saying uh, he should know that there is a big difference between profession and uh, education, I think, yeah. Well, uh, before I answer that question, kindly let me uh, respond to what she said. Yeah, and briefly. Okay. Thank you. The <laughs> reason why the dependency ratio of youths is very high mm-hmm. is because leaders have not done what we call empowerment to the youths. I think we should be shifting to power, uh, powering people. Empowering is giving people money. No, no, ha- no. Having no, money no. in their pockets. No, no, no. You see, this is what I mean. I am vying in Mountain View, right? I identify a group of people. How do I empower them? Maybe, for example, first thing is to register them uh, to be legally noticed. Mm-hmm. That way, it gives them a right to access any government office uh, with, uh, with their certificate mm-hmm. to either get Wezo Fund or Youth Fund. Mm-hmm. You see, I don't have money, mm-hmm. but I can empower a youth with an idea. Mm-hmm. I've been in the art industry till I went to the university. That is powering people. I'm, 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 <laughs> ca- I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> Empowering people. Mm-hmm. Is giving people power, like Shika power, man. <laughs> and that's what we want. If they have power, they have control. <laughs> now, if they have control, leaders will not come to lie to them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you see, so the, the issue should be empowering these youths. Now, let me come to my, our dear one who has said that uh, education and can you kindly come again? He's called Aspiran uh, Ben Okoth. Okay. He, he's saying there's a big difference between profession mm-hmm. and education. I think there, there's a communication missing there. In well, the reason why I said education is important is this. When you look at leadership on the context uh, of understanding, leadership is like a skill. Mm-hmm. Now, when you, uh, wh- while I'm doing my CV to apply to a company for a job, I'll mention there's uh, part of my skills, leadership, interpersonal, blah, 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 as I go. Okay. Now, the reason why I said education is this. Once you're a state officer, you are in charge, like in my word, I get to be in charge of over 30,000 people. Mm-hmm. 30,000 people, as much as I have the skill, I need to have education to run those people. If, for example, the county government, with the BBI thing, if it goes through, Nairobi will not have the, the governorship, right? Mm-hmm. If the national government back to the grassroots, it gives me, let's say, 100 million. Skill will not distribute. How will I ensure that each and every area of my ward gets equita- equitable distribution of these uh, projects mm-hmm. faithfully? Wisdom. Wisdom, and that's why we have accountants. I forgot to say I'm an accountant by profession. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to say I'm an accountant by profession. So I will champion for as much as we have the skill, but we also need education to run these public offices. Mm-hmm. That's why we'll avoid this problem of this. We are, in fact, it helps us to become under what we call self audit. Mm-hmm. This is what I've received, this is what I need to spend, and this is what is supposed to happen. Yes. All right. Thank you so I have much. A question for 
Yes. And give uh, <laughs> as you ask your question, you give as be well. giving us your 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 final words. Okay, I have a question for you. Um, if you, for instance, was to, uh, was to get into um, county government in twenty twenty two, yeah. Um, will you announce mm -hmm. for job positions? Uh, for oh, who do you make close? in your office um will you apply for uh, will you um, ask people to come and apply for job positions in your office or are you first going to give first uh, priority to the people that campaigned for you that's not where we come on the issue of integrity yes i just jibu <laughs> <laughs> what will you do <laughs> that's what i mean because eric um not eric but hillary if, if, if i can sum up everything and it, it's all right uh to the answer whichever the answer is uh, well, uh, I've been, I had been working for an MP 2018 uh, between March and September as a, as a researcher or actually communications person in parliament. Mm -hmm. And there's a culture, um, a system, some kind of system that exists um, in these places. Um, uh, a, former, a former mayor. Thank you. A former mayor in Nairobi told me, why there, let me tell you, what I'm going to say, there, hata ukienda kanjo. So say kanjo now, that this is still mm -hmm. called kanjo. Hata ukienda kanjo, I'm telling you, yuko nukwa wezi. You cannot, you cannot bring the kind of uh, uh, justice you want to your people. Why? People for the longest time, politicians for the longest time, have been employing people that worked for them in their campaigns to go and do very, crucial and important roles. Al al allow, me to respond. <laughs> allow me to respond to her remarks. <laughs> and eh? we are out of time. Yes, yes. Uh, just <laughs> for the last time. Eh? Okay. As an individual, there is what we call rewarding your closest loyalist. Merits. <laughs> Alright? <laughs> now, let me come. There is what we call rewarding your closest loyalist. Mm -hmm. And there is what we call government procedures on, 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 on job. Eh? Mm -hmm. Because job is not mine. I, as an MCA, I don't give jobs. Mm -hmm. That is what people need to understand. Mm -hmm. You don't need go jobs. Mm -hmm. But there is an advertisement from Public Service Commission, let's say in co public, uh, County Assembly, mm -hmm. where they need so and so. Mm -hmm. You can only advise them to apply. Let me tell you something. 90% of offices, electoral offices or whatever offices in Nairobi and, 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 and in Kenya, and they have 70% of their staff, people that campaigned for them. And these people, that is one of the things I had to struggle with every other single morning as I went to work. Because people think the moment you ask, hey, I saw the government signed uh, that uh, the total expenditure in this office, uh, whatever is going to be added by 50%. So if you were spending 110 million power, whatever, kwa hii office to ya muheshimiwa, I'm expecting a pay rise from 23,000 to this number of 1,000. You know, for a tea girl or, or, or for a secretary. Yeah, yeah, that should happen. But go to these offices. You Try see. counting the number of faces and heads working that, in those offices. Hillary, they are even yeah. ghost that's why Mr. Hillary, workers. While we were growing up, mm -hmm. while we were kids, we are told that we are the change for tomorrow. All right? That's the change true. has to start with me not the general public. So it's high time we stop generalizing these issues and address them as individuals. No, it's high time we also start oh. ad uh, addressing <laughs> the <laughs> ship people. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much, uh, Eric and uh, Wethera, for coming Shukran and trying Sandra. to put that it's into pleasure. place. Pleasure. Apparently, you couldn't have... Hillary, you, you didn't, didn't have allow me to say I'm a journalist by profession and a communication practitioner. <laughs> <laughs> you also didn't allow me to say I'm a Yes, and, and, and then my employer, my... Seconds, my seconds, and seconds, please. <laughs> the director will kill me. 30 seconds, please sign up and say uh, uh, what you wanted us to know okay, about. Okay, thank you. I'm Wadera Wanjiro, convener, Red Vest Movement. I'm a journalist by profession. Um, my third year or fourth year trying to get in a mass, all kind of whatever uh, experience to be able to get a job in future in these TV stations. And also like to say that I'm a digital security trainer. Um, I train people how to use their devices um, well online, and I'm a farmer. And I'm sending my love and warmth to the people of Kayole. And the way we said, we are having an MOU with our future leaders, that we as the people, we are inviting you, but this is number one, we want this, number two, we want this, number three, we want this. Because that is the only way uh, change is going to come in Kayole. Thank you. sana Hilary Wakunita Leo. Karibu. Eric. Well, my name is Eric Makoha. Uh, an accountant by profession, also a tax consultant. And yes, come 2022, I'll be vying for MCA position in Mountain View, Ward, Westlands constituency. I hope for your love. And I'm also sending my love to all my Westlands people. God bless you, and thank you, Hilary, for having me. You're very much welcome. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Waidira and Eric, for coming. I trust you have learned something regarding the uh, constitution, leadership, and integrity. 
uh, his vying so tutamuza tapeleka watoto wake shule gani knowing kuna system thank you so much for being part of us we will be taking a very short commercial break and when we come back we look now into lifestyle the art culture how does it pay how is it helping what are you doing about your talent and gifts keep it y254 and why in the morning we'll be taking a short break i'm deriva hillary good morning good morning